much like a stream carries sediment that you'll see as that cloudy mist moving through it, or can cause small pebbles to bounce along the stream bed. Wind can also carry large amounts of particles through the air. Now the key distinction between air and water, of course, is that air is much lighter, less dense than water, and thus wind has a much lower carrying power, if you will, than a stream. Because of this, the largest particle size that wind can usually carry is sand, and it can also carry silt and clay, the smaller particles. But clay is a bit of an interesting one because it's so rare due to the lack of chemical weathering in drier regions, which also happen to be the regions where wind is a more significant depositional and erosional feature. So clay is usually a much smaller part of what the wind carries. So the, the big two are sand and silt, the two S's. So let's start with sand. Sand is carried in what's called the bed load of a current of wind. The bed load starts when you have a gust of wind that strikes the ground with enough velocity to get a single particle or a few particles of sand moving. So when that gust strikes the ground, it hits the sand and the sand begins to move. It jumps up and moves in the direction of whatever way the wind was moving and it's continued to be carried by the wind as it's in the air, but gravity is pulling it down, and sand particles are usually too heavy to stay suspended in wind, so it gets pulled back to the ground. So what you get is a sort of arc. It does a little bounce, if you will. It saltates. Saltation is just a fancy term for jumping, bouncing, skipping, whatever you want to call it. So when the sand particle strikes the ground again, it causes more sand particles. The impact causes more sand particles to jump into the air. And each of these strikes the ground, and their impacts cause even more sand particles to jump into the air. So you have this process of saltation that continues and continues, and it feeds the bed load. The bed load is continued by sand particles, forcing more sand particles into the air through this saltation. Now these bounces rarely exceed about half a meter in height, so the bed load stays, as the name would have you expect, very close to the ground. The suspended load, which is made up of mostly silt and little bits of clay, as I discussed earlier, is the opposite of the low bed load. It can be very high in the air, and as the name implies, these silt particles stay suspended in the air. They don't settle down unless the wind gets to a low enough velocity or dissipates entirely. Now, the suspended load, interestingly, usually requires something to start it, and this something could very well be the bed load. You could have, for example, a gust of wind strike the ground and have a sand particle start to saltate. And when that sand particle saltates and hits the ground again, not only is it going to create more sand particles that jump into the air and add to the bed load, it's also going to send a lot of tiny little silt particles into the air. But gravity is too weak on these tiny little guys that they'll just stay up there and they'll stay suspended. Perhaps a more relatable situation, if you live on a dirt road and you have a car or a truck drive by, even if there wasn't much dust in the air originally, all of a sudden, those wheels, their movement gets all that dust, this layer of silt at the top of that road, up into the air. And if you're the unfortunate fool behind it, then, well, close your eyes and mouth. It'll be, it'll be good for you. Now the suspended load usually isn't carried very far away from its source because of the sporadic nature of winds. Unlike streams, they aren't confined to a channel, so they can move all about, and usually they dissipate, they reach lower velocities that cause sediments to drop out. But there have been cases where these sediments have been carried over oceans, over very long distances, and very high up into the air.